All right, guys, finally, we get to start laying up some carbon. So what we left off on the last one was cutting all of our carbon. You can see it stacked up here. So we still need to cut the rest of our consumables, which is our peel ply, our flow net, and our vacuum bag. Then right from there, we're just gonna go right to laying up on the mold and infusing. So we got all of our uh, materials on. I'll show you what's going on here. So you obviously saw us do the time lapse of laying up the carbon. Um, then goes the peel ply. Then our flow net. And you can see where we kind of overlapped it. The flow net is kind of what allows the epoxy to quickly run through the part. So it's a little bit of a weird layup, but you can see so our inlet's gonna happen here on the bottom. It's gonna flow through the flow net nice and quick, and as soon as it hits the peel ply, it's gonna slow down, giving it time to really saturate all the edges and the entire part. On our inlet line, you can see we use spiral wrap because this one's gonna use a lot of epoxy. You need that inlet volume to, to let it infuse through the part in enough time before it gels up on you. Then we have two vacuum lines on the end, going up to one, it's gonna be sharing the oven with a E46 sunroof that we have on order. So that's gonna be stuck up there. This is just gonna be lifted into the oven as soon as we vacuum it down, um, kind of almost right about here. All right, so I'm gonna stop the time lapse real quick so you can kind of see it in real time. So you can see all the little bubbles of air kind of working their way out throughout the laminate. And that's kind of why we do an uphill infusion because air obviously rises, so it's just easier to stay in front of the resin front. So same thing with this one, uphill infusion. So you can see how once it gets to the edge of the flow net, it really slows down. So it was able to make it this far through the flow net, but only like this far into an area where there's not flow net. And that's just kind of how we set them up. We stop the flow net a little bit prior to the part edge. So you can see we stop the flow net a little bit before it and we give ourselves plenty of resin break. So resin break, the only thing from the end of the part up to here is peel ply. Air can travel through the peel ply, but it's very difficult for the resin to make it through.
So we just closed the doors of the oven and I'm going to try and answer some questions that I'm sure are going to pop up. The main one being how many layers and how thick. Uh, the answer to that is it depends. I say it that way because if you're making uprights for a wing that only makes let's say 300 pounds you can obviously make it with less layers and make it less thick than what we're doing. Our Apex 15 which will be ending up on my car is capable of well over 2,000 pounds of downforce. Um, I don't think my particular car will get to that speed or need that angle, but it's a possibility, so we're gonna make them plenty thick. Uh, the finished uprights should be a little over a quarter of an inch thick. If you know the thickness of your carbon, it's just simple math, just add up your layers to end up with whatever thickness you need. Um, again, how many layers? There's multiple types of carbon fiber. Think of it as almost like sheets on your bed. You have a sheet and you have a comforter. So we use 12K, which is a thicker carbon that allows us to do less layers but achieve that thickness. I hope I'm explaining that correctly uh, or, or in a way that makes sense. So yeah, again, it kind of depends what you're making, how many layers you need. Um, so 12K is, you know, it, it just speeds up the process to make uprights. It's a much more expensive uh, weave or thread, but the time saving is there, so it's kind of, it's worth it. Uh, the other one is what temperature and how long do the parts stay in the oven? Depending on the epoxy that you use, consult your manufacturer or your data sheet to figure that out, our particular epoxy, our oven gets up to 140 um, and it'll be, it depends on the mix ratio. Full fast is only about two hours. If you do like a little bit of fast and slow and end up with a medium, it's about three hours in the oven. So again, kind of up to what material you use to kind of tinker with it and figure all that out. So hope that answers some questions that were bound to come. good fusion made it all the way you can see how it kind of stopped along the peel ply it didn't make it all the way hose collapsed good so we know we got good compression so looks good we're ready to demold bond and trim all right so we pulled these out of the oven to make room for a modular diffuser there's a lot going on right here and that's going to be heading out to a customer tomorrow but I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna walk us through the steps of what we're gonna do so that way we can kind of just time lapse through it so you kind of know what's going on so at this point we're ready to demold everything after we demold everything you can kind of see how there's, there's a right piece and a left piece they're opposite of each other so when we get done demolding it this one will basically flip over and get bonded to this one. That way we end up with our final thickness of part and it'll be shiny on both sides. How nice of a shine you get off of making a part off of a mirror. Nice, perfect infusion.
All right, so we just pulled this out of the oven and we unclamped it. You can see what I mean by making a left side and a right side. So when you bond the two together, you end up with a nice finish on both sides of the part. Now, this is where this comes back into play. We made this back in the first or second vlog, I forget. But basically, uh, if you remember right, this is the upright template, which we're basically just going to trace out and cut out of this thick panel. Once I trace it out, we do have these hole templates, which we can ship with our wings if you get just a wing, which would kind of allow you to quickly and easily drill holes that line up with the mounts on the wing. I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to use one of our uh, Corvette C6 uprights. Once I trace this out, just kind of put it where I know it'll fit and, and have good clearance and everything. Um, so if you're doing this from scratch, you've never done it before, there might be a little bit of fab work, but you know, this makes it pretty easy and we should be good to go. Uh, trimming. We use a Dremel with a you know fine diamond blade, obviously safety equipment, and that's about it. So that's what we're going to get to right now. We're going to trim and drill these and sand them, and then we're finally ready to kind of start mock-up on the car. All right, so here we are. We're just kind of clipped on for right now. I'm going to have to open up this slot right here because the old aluminum uprights are 3 16 while these are a little over a quarter of an inch. So I am going to have to cut these off and redo this, but you, you pretty much get the idea. So it's just loosely bolted. It's still hanging from our A-frame wing hanger device. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So we'll put the other one on, um, modify these, drill our holes, mount it, and that's about it. So, yeah, so that's about it for this one. Um, the next one, we'll probably go over the modification of this. This one was primarily just how to make some custom, you know, carbon uprights from cardboard. Um, we can do it for you if you want. Um, and yeah, we'll see you in the next one.